Ahoy there, fellow travelers. Welcome to E-Travels with E-Trules, a personal and literary podcast of travel adventures and misadventures from around the world. This is Eric Trules, and thanks for listening. E-Travels with E-Trules Christmas, 2008 Amsterdam, the perfect city Perfect? Well, I remember in Kerala, India Sitting at the edge of the gently flowing cow-brown Alapi River laid back with my legs up on the wooden arms of the traditional grandfather chair, I felt like I was in the perfect place, just watching the river flow, at peace with myself and the universe. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to pursue anything. I just had to let it all come to me, whatever it was. I mean, I always felt bad for Spaulding. Gray, he could never find his elusive, perfect moment. When I was finding them, and still am finding them, all the time. Perfect enough, anyway. In tune with myself, not thinking of the irking past or worrying about the unpredictable future. Just content in the moment. Who needs meditation? Religion, art, prayer, politics, work, and of it, when life is so full. Anyway, it's different here in Amsterdam than along the Alapi. You don't simply sit by and watch the river flow. Here it's the Amstel River, with its patchwork of 200 canals. Here you get on a boat even if it's a tourist glass bottom boat in the freezing sunlit air. Or maybe just cross one of the intricate canals by foot. Either way, you become part of the city, part of life, part of the flow. Doesn't matter which way the boat turns, up which canal, down which lock. Doesn't matter which bridge you cross by foot or bicycle. It's all good. You're in the center of the city, Centuries old or recently restored, rusty red and white brick buildings, each with their own unique gables, identifying the family, the industry of the miller, the baker, the candlestick maker, from the 16th century, the 17th century, when the Dutch were commanders of the high seas and founded New Amsterdam in the New World for 24 trinkets paid to the bare-chested Manhattan Native Americans. When the Dutch sailed east and brought back silks and spices from the Malacca Strait between Indonesia and the Malay Peninsula, when the mighty Dutch East India Company ruled the world of commerce, when the Netherlands was not just a little tulip-loving, pot-smoking country on the international backpacker circuit, but when it was numero uno for an empire's brief reign, fighting it out with merry old England and the rest of the bloody warriors of the roses. Surya and I are officially visiting the in-laws in Rotterdam, her sister Chus and brother-in-law Dave. But we're covering a lot of ground from the teeming center of old Antwerp to the Christmas markets of West Germany to the canals and footbridges of Amsterdam, where we visit its old hippie Dom Square and its jazz-loving Leidseplen, its beer-swilling Rembrandt Square and its sexy, seedy, and garish red light district, where bare-skinned and painted ladies still sit on window display each and every night. We're staying right across the street from the historic Anna Frank House on Prinzengracht, next to the Tony shops and restaurants of the Jordan, thanks to the generosity of Letitia, my former student, and her fiancé, Burr, who are holidaying back in sunny California while we're cat-sitting Fritz the cat. 
I've never been to Europe in December. It's amazing. The original winter wonderland. I'm loving it. The half-frozen canals, the people bundled up in winter coats, scarves, gloves, hats, riding bicycles, buying groceries, walking everywhere. Such a change from car-happy, prettified L.A. Everyone who can afford to, driving around in their clean, washed, and buffed automobiles, wearing the latest brands of the day, so concerned about what others think and how they stack up. Here in Holland, women don't wear much makeup at all, yet they seem to age far more naturally and gracefully than in L.A. Fewer lifts, tucks, and implants. Men, too, so much more real than in L.A., more down-to-earth, more at peace with themselves, better sense of style. Sure, most of them, men and women, have their jobs, their smartphones, iPads, and cable TVs, but come on. There is a difference between Amsterdam and L.A. Amsterdam Center is a much smaller city than spread out Los Angeles. Geographically speaking, smaller even than Manhattan. But surprisingly, it's much easier to get lost in Amsterdam. I don't know why. Maybe it's because all the canals and street corners look the same. At least to a newcomer's eyes. I mean, in New York, even when you walk your feet off, you can still recognize the differences between Times Square, Chinatown, Harlem, the Upper East Side, Soho, the High Line, Wall Street, the Battery, on and on. And in L.A., even from your car window, you can't miss the differences between South Central, Beverly Hills, Echo Park, Downtown, Santa Monica, the Valley, Koreatown, East L.A., Pasadena, on and on. But here, in Amsterdam, Herrengracht looks like Prinzengracht, looks like Kaisergracht. In fact, all the Grachts, canals, look the same. So you have to navigate it in a different way. You have to count canal rings from the center of the city. Singelgracht is first, Herrengracht next, Kaisergracht, Prinzengracht, and so on. But as I said, it doesn't matter. It's all old world charm and the icy cold. You just have to dress warm. I told you to wear layers. That's me to the wife with my sage New York and Chicago winter advice. Don't worry, I am. That's the wife who grew up in sweltering Indonesia, tramping around Amsterdam's central flea market, shivering, in her stylish L.A. threads, what can I do? I buy her an old white fox short-waisted coat. It's beautiful, but it's like Swiss cheese. She's still freezing. But hey, at least my wife and I have finally agreed on something. Different things make different people happy. She likes to shop. I like history and beauty. Choose her sister likes to shop. Dave likes rock and roll. Yet, somehow we found a way to make everyone happy. The sisters shop in the ubiquitous German and Dutch malls. Dave takes them to a trendy Leidzeplen rock and roll club on Christmas Eve, and I go to Christmas Eve Mass at the Vesterkirk, and I listen to the liturgy and Christmas carols in Dutch. Sure, it takes a while to get with a family program. Okay, maybe years to learn who you are, who your partner is, to know what the new in-laws like and don't like. But should you be strong-minded, patient, loving, and flexible enough, which travel teaches you, times ten, then you just might be lucky enough to have a good trip with your partner. Maybe even a perfect moment. I figure I must be doing something right. I think it may have something to do with my giving my best to my students and them giving back to me years later in unpredictable and surprising ways. Like here in Amsterdam. Anyway, I feel like a lucky man. Hot Belgian waffles, delicious European ham, cheese, and dark beer. 
fresh baguettes, local wine, Jägermeister, Sumatran coffee, truffles, thick mushroom soup, 34-year-old Portuguese port, foot-long bratwurst, warm new wine in the street markets, yogurt in cartons, hot frites on the street with mayonnaise, flannel shirts, turtlenecks, silk leggings under the pants, hot steam coming out of your mouth like from a New York manhole. Do we talk politics? Obama? Terrorism? Socialism? Health care benefits? Paid maternal leave for newborns? Sick pay? Not much. It's like most places outside the U.S. No Iraqi or Israeli headlines. No death counts. People just content to live their lives, to make enough money to get by, to make more money, feed their children, put them through school, put themselves in debt by buying those new flat screens, iPads, and iPhones. I always think it's striking just how much we all really do have in common all around our lonely planet, or just how many of our leaders, the media, and our neighbors emphasize our differences, how we continually choose fear and war over love and peace. I meet a friend of the in-laws, Jan Pieter, a really nice guy, tall, Dutch, prematurely gray, 45, married for a second time to an Indonesian woman, doing well, till recently, developing real estate in southern Spain. Friendly and generous, Jan Pieter pays a good deal of his income to alimony and child support, and he never leaves the Netherlands. Says he doesn't like to fly, can't take it. Also says he never stops thinking about his business, even when he's on Christmas vacation, like today. I invite him and his lovely Dutch-Indonesian wife, Glynis, to come to L.A., Jan Pieter says, I can't. I get claustrophobic after four hours in the plane. I say, take a sleeping pill. You'll stop thinking about your business if you get away from home. You'll love L.A. Jan Pieter gets a funny look on his face. He's considering the plane, the cost, the business. Do I really expect to see him in L.A.? I certainly hope so. I give a good L.A. tour. But I'll be surprised if he and Gwen has come. It's hard to escape a routine, to change your scenery. And most people think it's so expensive to travel. Well, I don't know how I manage it year after year. Maybe it's my karma, or my path, or just my priority. I'm not a rich man, but somehow I'm able to travel. And I really don't think it costs me any more to come to Holland for a month than it costs me to live in Los Angeles. I have a renter in my Echo Park house, which I still rent myself. I stay with friends and family. I'm frugal. And I don't have to pay for gasoline for my damn L.A. car. I say, where there's a will, there's a way. I think we all need to get away from our lives, our routines for a little while. To see ourselves, our lives, anew. Travel gives perspective. It's expansive, challenging, and enlightening. I mean, what the hell? Life has a way of working out one way or another. I always try to remember that behind every closed door lies an open window of opportunity. Setbacks are just opportunities stood on their heads. Or asses. So, come on. Look for a little change in adventure. Find the flow, maybe even a perfect moment. Love from the Amstel, Amsterdam, Al. Original music composed by Amanda Yamate, sound designed by Alicia Bermudez, produced by Harry Duran at Fullcast. Please contact us with your feedback and to schedule an on-air interview. This podcast has been supported with the USC Capstone Grant. Special thanks to Phil Allen and the School of Dramatic Arts for their support.